Uh, first, I will introduce the background of this paper. The heterogeneous information network, also known as HIN, refers to the network with multiple types of nodes or attributes or edges. Many networks in the real world scenario can be modeled as HIN, such as the social network and the computer networks. Mining HINs has attracted increasing attention from both research and the industry community. Compared with homogeneous information network with single type of nodes and the edge, mining HIN has to deal with the multiple types of nodes and edges, which may contain rich thematic meanings. For example, as illustrated in the left figure, the bibliographic network is a typical HIN, which contains venue, paper, and the author. The relationship between different types of nodes have cross corresponding semantic meanings, such as the citation relationship among papers and the, the author writes the paper as illustrated in the right figure. Such relationship with semantic meanings is also called the, the meta path. Considering these types of nodes and relations can help us better understand the HIN and benefit the downstream tasks, such as the uh, node classification and the uh, link prediction. Uh, however, directly analyze the HINs are inconvenient since each node may contain attributes and several types of relations should be considered in a unified framework. To overcome this challenge, the graph embedding or the graph neural network method are introduced to HIN, which is, we also call it HIN embedding. The purpose of HIN embedding is to learn low dimensional representation for each node so that both the proxy proximity between nodes and the semantic meaning of each meta path can be preserved in the embedding space. Existing HIN embedding methods have largely followed a, such a learning framework. First, the HIN is projected to several homogeneous information network with single type of node and edge, such as the user inter interaction relationship and the user watch the same movie uh, in, the, in this figure. Then, based on the homogeneous information network embedding methods, such as the GraphSage, GCN, and the GAT, we can learn the embedding for node in each uh, homogeneous network. Also, we call it metapath-based embedding. Finally, we transform and fuse the metapath-based embedding in each metapath and output the final embedding. This is the global fr uh, framework of uh, most existing HI embedding methods. Although the above mentioned framework has been widely used by existing HI embedded methods and uh, uh, somehow seems reasonable, each, each meta path is modeled independently. So here comes the first research question Should the meta paths be modeled independently? Intuitively, each meta path is a view or a description of the HIN. As different views of the same object, the meta paths are naturally correlated. For example, the relationship between authors can be measured by the author paper author or author paper venue paper author, uh, which means the uh, co authorship or the two authors published a paper or, or two paper in the same venue. Uh, considering these two meta passes in the biographical network, we believe that there exists correlation between these two types of uh, meta paths since two authors that co authored a paper have higher probability to publish paper in the same venue, right? So based on the above observation and the assumption, we face the second research question. If there exists uh, the correlation among meta passes, is it useful for HIN embedding? So first we conduct some impractical analysis on uh, some real world data sets. As illustrated in this uh, figure, we can find that the average degree varies quite differently between meta passes in the same data set. That is to say, uh, the meta pass based homogeneous network are quite different in their uh, sparsity. So, this may lead to two problems in modeling the meta pass based embedding, namely the sparsity problem and the re redundancy problem. The sparsity problem refers to some metapasses that are valuable but sparse. 
for example, the uh, coarser relationship we mentioned uh, uh, before that uh, the this uh, this beta test is very important for modeling the author preference, but we can uh, only collect very few meta pass instances since uh, we uh, each author may have limited uh, uh, courses. The redundancy problem refers to some meta passes that are abandoned but redundant, such as the uh, two authors published uh, uh, two paper in the same venue. Although we can collect uh, a large amount of uh, meta pass instances in uh, by this meta pass, but most of them are not very related or helpful to the user modeling since the bigger conference always co uh, have many different tracks such as the web conference we are attending. So uh, by considering the correlation between meta passes, we are able to get some extra guidance from other meta passes so that the information of meta passes can be explicit shared. So here comes the third research question how to use the correlation to solve the above problem and make full use of the uh, meta passes. Okay, uh, our idea uh, come from the knowledge installation which has attracted much attention in machine learning community. The general idea of original uh, knowledge installation is that many large scale models with millions of param parameters are deployed in the cloud server with high computational resources. However, such model cannot deploy to the edge equipment with low computational resources, such as the uh, laptop, mobile phones, or the IoT devices. So knowledge distillation aims at transferring the knowledge from large teacher network to the small student network as uh, illustrated here, uh, so that the lightweight student network can be deployed to the low computational devices uh, we mentioned. Recently, the knowledge distillation has also been explored to different research spheres, including the uh, natural language processing, computer vision, and the uh, graphs. Among them, the deep mutual learning, or we call it the online dis knowledge distillation, has re uh, attracted much attention. Well, uh, for its model, they have several branches, uh, uh, several branches, and uh, each of each branch can be seen seen as the teacher network or the student network. Then each branch of model are mutually learned and enhance each other. In the deep mutual learning uh, or the uh, online knowledge installation, the knowledge in each branch of model can be transferred to other branches and boost, boost the performance of the uh, final model. Such mutual, uh, mutual learning has been uh, proved to be very effectively uh, in uh, many real world tasks. And uh, recently, as the in the uh, red figure, we can see uh, the uh, the mutual learning is uh, can be successfully uh, calculated by the mutual information uh, among different branches. Uh, so uh, please refer to the uh, following two great paper uh, in the bottom uh, for more detail about uh, the uh, deep mutual learning and uh, the deep mutual information estimation. Okay. So let's return to the meta pass that, uh, uh, as we have described, it, they can be treat, treated as different views of the same uh, HIN. So we can borrow the idea from machine learning and the mutual information maximization across views. And uh, we aim at learning the HIN embedding by deep mutual knowledge distillation. Okay, here is the uh, overall framework of our proposed method named the uh, uh, C uh, collaborative knowledge installation, or aka the CKD, we can see that the overall framework can be divided into four parts, namely the heterogeneous information network input, meta pass based network construction, context subgraph sampling, and the knowledge modeling. Next, I will introduce each part in detail. So, given the heterogeneous Sorry, sure. information network, uh, okay. Sorry, interrupt. It looks like the slide is stuck. Are you playing the, uh, the slides? Uh, yes. Yes, I'm oh. playing the slides. Oh, okay. Maybe now we can see the model. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, my network is lagging. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, given the heterogeneous information network and the meta pass, we first project the HI into several meta pass based homogeneous network with single type of nodes. To overcome the sparsity problem uh, we defined above, 
we utilize the graph diffusion technique that, that model the pairwise relationship between each pair of nodes. Here, we use the personalized page rank method described in the uh, equation. Of course, we can also utilize other diffusion metrics such as the graph distance. So, and the next, to improve the training efficiency, we conduct the subgraph sampling on each metapath based network to extract the graph from a uh, subgraph from different uh, granularity. Here we assume, uh, here we sample the uh, subgraph with the simply top, top K uh, uh, instances. Okay. So given the subgraph around each node, we then define and extract the knowledge from three aspects, namely the node level knowledge represented by the node embedding, regional knowledge represented by the subgraph embedding, and the global knowledge represented by the metapass level embedding. For each level of knowledge, we can use any graph neural network architecture, such as the uh, GCN graph stage or the GAT we mentioned. Here, we only use the uh, simple GCN and leave the other neural network group, uh, graph neural networks in the future work. To conclude, by uh, these three steps, we have modeled the three types of knowledge in each meta pass. And the next, we aim at make full use of this knowledge in a mutual learning manner and uh, enhance each other. Uh, inspired by the collaborative machine learning and uh, online related distillation, we propose two types of collaborative distillation, named the intra metapath and the inter metapath collaborative distillation. The intra metapath distilling um, aim at transferring the regional and the global knowledge in each metapath to the node embedding. And uh, as a result, the metapath based node embedding can preserve the important pattern in the subgraph and uh, the metapath. For the uh, inter metapath collaborative distillation, we want to we want to transfer the knowledge between different metapaths, which can well utilize the correlation between metapaths. As a result, the final embedding can capture the information from each metapath or the and the uh, correlation among different metapaths, which can benefit the final embedding. So the uh, overall objective of our proposed CKD is optimizing by the maximizing the above. Uh, measure information. Okay, here comes the uh, our experiment. Uh, but, uh, we have conducted extensive experiments on six real world data sets and uh, uh, compared with several recent proposed HI in many methods. According to the uh, uh, left uh, big table, we can see that our proposed method performs better than baseline method in uh, most data, uh, data sets. Also, some methods uh, we can see that we, some methods cannot scale to large data sets, which uh, dem demonstrates the efficiency of our proposed method. Uh, of course, this is the benefit from the subgraph sampling and the batch training of our uh, method. We also conduct ablation study and uh, parameter analysis on the proposed method. Uh, on the uh, up left figure, the CKDIO, uh, the first one means the local only version of CKD. And the uh, CKDGO means the global only, and the uh, CKDIO means the intra meta pass only CKD. As uh, illustrated in the figure, we can observe that the, our design modular that considering different uh, types of knowledge is necessary and can somehow boost the performance. The parameter analysis shows that our method is not uh, very sensitive to the parameter setting. Okay, to conclude, in this paper, we have made the first attempt to explicitly model the correlation between metapasses in HIM embedding with the proposed collaborative knowledge distillation framework. And by modeling the regional and the global knowledge in each metapass, our, our approach can efficiently preserve local and global pattern in the final embedding. Also, the expensive, uh, extensive experiments, including note classification, uh, link prediction and the ablation studies are conducted on six real world uh, HIS, which demonstrated the effectiveness of our proposed math uh, framework. Okay, thank you for uh, watching. And uh, uh, if you have any uh, question, we can also uh, contact by the email or visit my homepage. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Sean. Um, any questions from the audience?
I actually have a quick one. So uh, I okay. can't help but notice that the, um, the data sets that you, that you use in the paper, most of them are quite, uh, fairly uh, limited in the sense of that they have limited numbers of labels. I'm just wondering like yeah. to handle the real world knowledge graphs, like, you know, knowledge graph from Amazon or from Google, um, where the, uh, you know, the no types and they are, you know, uh, hundreds or even more types or uh, node or add types. Um, to handle such uh, large, hard, large and heterogeneous graphs, um, is this still sufficient to use MetaPath based method as you, you did in your framework? Oh uh, yes, this is a good question. And uh, uh, actually, uh, I think the heterogeneous information network and the, the knowledge uh, graph are quite similar. And uh, uh, actually, the knowledge graph are more complicated than the HIN. And uh, uh, for me, uh, the the HIN, uh, the meta path, uh, is a simple version of the relations in knowledge graph. But considering the uh, efficiency of our tra model training, we have tested the uh, different scales of the datasets. And uh, we believe that uh, given uh, the few uh, types of uh, meta passes, we can uh, scale to very large datasets. But uh, if we have uh, many meta passes or uh, like the knowledge graphs, many rela relation types, uh, that uh, we may be somehow hard since we have to calculate uh, uh, the mutual information among each type, uh, each two types of uh, meta passes. So uh, in our future work, we will uh, try to improve the uh, efficiency on the uh, large scale HIS or the knowledge graphs. 